Um, so this is a simple circuit, circuit-wise, and I think uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through step by step because it's the question is kind of walking me through. So I have uh, three registers in series. So that means their equivalent resistance is uh, simply the sum of these three registers. It's simple enough. And uh, one thing that I hope you realize as you look at this uh, circuit is that with this simple series of circuit, there is really only one current. So um, I can imagine in simplifying this circuit into this equivalent circuit, which is with a single battery and a single equivalent register with the resistance R equivalent, or sometimes called it, this is the Thevenin equivalent circuit. And um, the current I find here will be the exact same current that I would find here. I'm kind of imagining these registers being in a black box and from outside the black box, um, the, what I get with the circuit on the left is the exact same thing as what I get from the circuit on the right. So, so this current can be found pretty easily. It's simply, uh, Ohm's law, <laughs> if you got the voltage of the battery, then it's the voltage divided by the equivalent resistance. And that same current is the same current here, R1 plus R2 plus R3. And that's gonna be the same current through the register R3, register R2 and register R1. Um, as you might remember from circuit interval last week, the, these registers don't use up current. It charges conserved. It's the same current that flows through. So um, by the way, um, the, for the answer here, you do simply have to put in the same value three times, uh, you know, comma separated. That's how the thing accepts answers. <laughs> I'm trying to trick you into saying different values, but they are not different. Okay, find the potential drop across each register. So this is the step that I was alluding to. So most of the times when we say solve the circuit, what we really want to do is find the current. And the reason being, once you know the current through all the branches of the circuit, then the rest of the information is pretty easy to find. And some of that rest of the information is things like the voltage drop across each of the elements. So what, what's the voltage drop across the register three? What is the voltage drop across register one? What is the voltage drop across the register two? All those are potentially interesting information. And, and once I know the current, then I can find it pretty easily by using Ohm's law. The voltage drop across the register one is simply the current that I already calculated times the resistance R1. Same deal with the voltage drop across register two and voltage drop across register three. So, so it's a single step thing that'll give you the number I want. So for the answer here, I'm simply gonna put in I times R1, I times R2 and I times R3. So this is what I mean. The current is the useful intermediate information to have. Um, then once you have it, no matter what you're asked, it's a, a single step away to getting that answer. And the same deal with the power dissipated. I guess we didn't talk too much about the power. There is one lecture video that does um, tell you the formulas for power. Uh, there's a three different formulas that's useful to know. And which one is the easiest to use depends. Um, so let me write down all three. The power uh, dissipated in a circuit context, you can express it in terms of the voltage times current. Uh, and um, yeah, let me write it all out first and then I will explain what to be careful about. And um, uh, you can replace either of these using Ohm's law, you know, uh, voltage is current times resistance. So using that, you can eliminate voltage to get I squared the R. That's one of the expressions for power dissipated. Or you can eliminate I to get uh, V squared over R. 
And the thing to be the most careful about using this formula is what the meaning of V is. And the meaning of V is the voltage drop across the element you are concerned with. So if you are talk, if you, the element you are concerned with the, is the battery, then it would be the battery voltage. Now, if you are uh, concerned about the um, concerned about the resistors, then it's really the voltage drop across the resistor that you should be using. And um, so, so um, in cal doing calculation for question like this, one of the mistakes that I can imagine people making is people using this voltage <laughs> instead of the voltage drop across the register. So one way to avoid that mistake entirely is to simply use this formula for when you are looking for power dissipated through a register. Because when you use this formula, it's almost impossible to make mistakes because you will have find, found the current through the register and it's gonna be the same current whenever you have a branch um, that you found and the resistance, hopefully you'll be using the right value. So uh, for this question, I would recommend just use that formula. You already found the current, use that and calculate I squared R1, I squared R2, and I squared R3 to find that answer. Um, and you know, you can also you know, use this third formula and use the voltage you found in the previous step. That's fine. It'll give you the same answer. And the total power supplied by the battery, uh, you can do it in multiple different ways. I guess the easiest one and the one I would probably go with is V times I. Uh, this is the formula that's usually done uh, most useful to calculate the power dissipated by battery because usually the voltage will be fixed by the voltage of the battery. And hopefully in the step in the steps leading to the solution for the circuit, you found the current. So uh, uh, and you can also do uh, this uh, when you calculate that, that should be equal to I squared R1 plus I squared R2 plus I squared R3. So if you wanna, I don't know, double check your answer, that's one thing you can do, but don't have to. So this is an illustration of how once you find a current, then that single piece of information is so useful in answering a lot of different things about the circuit. That's why uh, when I describe solving the circuit, I mostly refer to finding the current, um, assuming that the resistances and voltages are given.